done with my run today, gotta go back in and start helping my kids with school. Been the new rhythm for me and my wife. Um, our kids are obviously not in school with this uh, COVID-19 thing. We've been self quarantining in our home, not going out outside of these kind of runs. We've been trying to be teachers and um, use Chromebooks and log into iPads and do all these things. One of the things that I've discovered with a lot of my friends um, is that like the education apps and the logins for school and other things with the Chromebooks have been uh, more complicated than I think people expect it to be. And so I'm gonna take today some time. I figure I could share some of our story, what I've learned, um, getting our kids online and using school stuff, and then also share my experience, what I know from working on some profile stuff in Chrome. I and mean, hopefully that'll be useful to you or anyone you know that you might be able to share this video with that might be having some of the same difficulties and trying to figure out how to get all the education things set up at school. So yes, I'm gonna go finish this run and then, um, Get back to the video. Okay, this is my son, Cade. Tell him who you are. What grade are you in? Second grade. Okay, this is uh, my Chromebook from work. He has an EDU account uh, with his, his Google like, email address. He signed into here before, but I'm gonna let him sign in as he does. I didn't tell him how to do this. He knew exactly his passwords and everything. If you have your, your credentials for your kid, you can sign in as well. But I'll show you kind of, show me what you did, kid. And you have your email, right? You know your account. Pass it in. And it signed you in. Okay, so how do you know how do you know that you're in your in your account? In your because profile? I see all my bookmarks and all my stuff. So your bookmarks and all your stuff from Yes. So this is what it looks like when you're at school? Yeah. Okay, now what are these things up here? Show me what where you go. So these are my bookmarks. I have to click one and it takes me there. And what is this one? This is P Links. What's P Links? It's a place that has all the school districts. My favorite one is ST Math. ST Math, okay, you've got ST Math. That. Yeah, that's closing the tab. But how do you know how do you log in? You type in your code. So this is a good example of one of the softwares called STMath that their system uses. It's all based on that same that same authentication, that Gmail, that password. So when you log in with those school credentials, the password they enter that now registers from that school. Percentage. If you get to 100%, your teacher might give you a prize or something. Hey, but this is my YouTube channel, okay? The main thing is that when you create a new profile and you sign in with your Gmail account, those credentials are then shared with all these other sites that he has on this P-Link site that are all this um, softwares and things he uses at school, which most likely your school is assigning for your student through probably Google Classroom or something like that. I'll explain more later. Okay, that's it. Thank you. No. Bye. It was nice working. And what my son was talking about was essentially how he's signing into his Chromebook using his Gmail address, his Google account, which is also his education um, email. He uses that account to log into his Chromebook um, and essentially his Chrome UI, his browser, shows all the things that he's used to and he's familiar with um, that he sees at school. So I'm gonna go over some of the terms about that process so that we make sure we all know what we're talking about when I go over all the details on the computer. Essentially, um, a Chrome profile is what it sounds like. It's a profile that you use in Chrome, it associates all of your browsing history and your bookmarks and your passwords, and most importantly, your Google account, all of those things. Um, so your profile is essentially like person one. It's a, a basically a generic profile. When you log into your Google account, it then takes on your name, and if you choose to sync, it takes all of your Chrome things and syncs them with your Google account and associates and makes that connection. And then when you log into any Chrome profile with that Google account, account, you get that same experience across all your devices. So that's a feature that I worked on about three or four years ago. The main benefit of that in the context of education is that um, that email, that Gmail account, when you log into a Chrome profile with that, it takes all of the education things, all of the logins, all of the bookmarks, all the things, the history that they've done at school and it brings it to that Chrome profile on your home computer. So that's the main benefit of signing into a profile. I'm gonna get into the specifics of different OS's and different computers, and so I just wanted to tangle that and spend a couple seconds on that. But first, when I talk about OS, that's an operating system, and essentially that is the software that's running on the machines. In the context of Windows, there's many different types of machines that you can buy, different laptops. They all run Windows as the operating system. You can buy different Apple computers, right, like a MacBook or a Mac Pro. Um, those all run Mac OS. So Chromebooks, they run a version of Chrome, essentially, that is an operating system. So it's kind of like Chrome, the browser, is running on Chrome OS. None of that really matters. It just is important to understand that these things run differently because 
because when you sign into a Chromebook, you sign at the account level. When you sign into a Mac or Windows device, you're signing in at the browser level. So when we talk about the browser, that's just the app. That's the little window frame with the forward and back and refresh that you put in the URL or where you search to get to the websites or the things that you're looking. So when you're using a browser, the important thing is that this all has to be done in Chrome. These Chrome profiles, this exchange with the Google account at your school has to be done in Chrome because it's a Chrome profile. So if you're on a Windows machine or if you're on a Mac machine, you have to make sure that you download Chrome and then you're not using Safari or Edge because the Chrome profiles won't work with your Google accounts there. You'll be able to log into Gmail in those browsers, but it's different as far as seeking the bookmarks and all the things that are going to be useful for your kid or your student to understand and be familiar with the environment that they're used to on a Chromebook. There's your device, your laptop, the OS, the browser which runs on the OS, um, and then the profile which we're going to create that syncs to your Google account. Thanks for sticking with me with that. Let's go to the computer. So I've got a Chromebook, I've got my MacBook hooked up to this display, and then I also have a Windows Surface device. And the reason I have these three devices is because I want to attempt to show you where Chrome profiles exist on all these things, and then the pros and cons of all of these different operating systems on these devices, and how that affects Chrome and your Chrome profile and what you see. So on this Chromebook, I have four profiles, two that are my personal profiles and two that are my kids' profiles. One's personal, one's for work, and um, the other two are for the two, the two education profiles. For the sake of this example, I'm gonna create a new profile and sign with one of my test Gmails just to show how the sign-in process works and how you, the different ways that you can sign in and sync your profile. And then I'm also going to show how you would sign in with that same account on uh, the different operating system platforms, uh, whether that's Mac or Windows. I have this Chromebook. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, add a new person. Adding a new person is a new profile. So here I'm gonna type in my test account email um, or Google account. So there's gonna be a couple things you have to go through and sign here. Um, sign up for services, yes, yes, yes. Um, now the process here when you go on a Chromebook is going to ask you to set up things like you're setting up a new device. Um, this is very normal. That's because um, when you're signed into Chrome, um, on a Chromebook you're signing in not only to Chrome the browser but to um, the entire operating system and all the services, um, whether that's um, the Play Store or any of the other things that you need to Google account for, those things are always going to be signed into that profile. Once you're into the profile, just like my son said, he recognized the background of his desktop. Your kid or your students should recognize the environment, um, the background and or the browser itself should resemble what they see at school. This is just the generic default browser here. Um, I have bookmarked a couple things in here to show that there's some bookmarks. So I have a YouTube, a Facebook, and this watercolor painting thing uh, from Arts and Culture. But you can go in here and like add a different background or upload an image. So I think on my son's actual profile, he has like Lego Batman and some different pictures. It's kind of fun to go through here and change these things. We'll, we'll pick this black and the space image for this example. For shortcuts, you can actually have most visited sites um, or you can have your shortcuts. This is a feature that I worked on as well. Uh, you could imagine going in and actually changing all the shortcuts. If your kid hasn't already set those up, this is a nice place to put all of the apps and the services that they use um, right here on this page. So you can customize those links too. Long story short, once they get into the state, they should be going on a Chromebook. Most of the bookmarks and things that they link to either already have been autofilled and put in by the teacher or are also used um, with the same Gmail authentication that you use to sign into your Chromebook. So that's why Chromebooks are so useful. Um, it's only per student, um, all of their thing, all their school stuff will be in that profile. That's the main difference between the Chromebook operating system and then something like Mac OS or Windows. The nice thing is once you're in here, you can switch. One of the other big differences is switching profiles once you're in a Chromebook is down here in the dock. It's usually the bottom right or if you have it to the left, it's on the left. So here's where you would switch between your profiles. It would sign you all the way out. You can sign back in with a different Gmail. Switching between profiles is different on these other platforms and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so we have a Chrome profile set up. Um, I'm here um, in bed, like most of us, now that we're working from home, and I find myself and my wife, we're um, getting all this information, all this communication from three different teachers trying to get three things set up, and we're on our phones, and this just happened today, but I realized that even if you have all your Chrome profiles set up correctly, like me and my wife do, a lot of the communications and things you're getting from the school and the teachers is through either email or text messages or other apps that aren't entirely linked to this entire Chrome profile education system that your kid 
um, or student is functioning in. I'm gonna, after this, show how you sign in to your Chrome profile on and or on a Mac or Windows and explain that in detail. I wanna just explain a little bit why I think even if you get Chrome profiles and these things correct, why the system is, is less than ideal. And so I hope to like bring some light to that so you understand it a little bit better. Okay, so on Windows, um, this is different. So this is my Windows laptop, Surface Pro. So I have my Surface Pro, which is my main um, Windows computer here. And I'm signed into my personal profile up here in the top right corner, you can see this. The main thing that um, you want to know is this is where you switch between different profiles when you're on a Windows or a Mac. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a new person in this menu, similar to how I did on the on the launch screen of the Chrome of the Chromebook. So I have a new dialog here. I'm just gonna put this as test. Call this vlog. Now I'm in a new profile in Chrome. If I go back to that um, profile switcher, you'll see here. So if you go to the top right corner, you'll see um, the new profile we have, Buchelman Test, and then all of the other profiles. One thing that you'll notice here is I have two different ways that I can sign in. I can sign in from this profile menu that says turn on sync, or I can say get started um, already a Chrome user here on the main page. Both of these, for the sake of Windows, I'm gonna sign in through this main page, and then on Mac, I'll sign in through the user menu just to show the difference. So I'm on Windows, this is the first page after I created the new profile. I'm going to go to sign in because I already have a Gmail account or an education account for my student. I'm gonna type that Gmail in like I did um, on the Chromebook. Same steps. So boom, there we go. Um, now we're signed into that profile in Chrome. If I go back here, you can see now the sync is on. Essentially what that means when sync is on, it means that everything that sits at that Google account, which in, in this case is your student's education account, um, gets pulled down to that device into that profile. Um, in this case, that profile is specifically on this browser in, inside of Windows. I'm on a Chromebook, it's pulling down that entire profile for that entire operating system profile. Now that I'm signed in here, you can see that I have the same bookmarks, the same new tab page with the background, the shortcuts, all those things will be here. It's also going to be your history, any passwords, addresses, credit cards, any of those things that are saved to the device. Um, those things are synced and saved to your profile as well, so that when you're going cross device, you have access to that same stuff. That's how a lot of adults and professionals use it. Obviously, in the case of students, the real most important things are their passwords, their links, um, and them just feeling comfortable and knowing that they know, you know the environment that they're in on different devices. Okay, so now I'm on my main machine in Mac OS. Um, this is no different than Windows, aside from the fact that Apple makes it instead of Microsoft. Uh, but in the top right corner um, in Chrome, you'll see the same user menu where you can switch between profiles. It's turn on sync, it's gonna ask you the same thing. Sign into your Gmail account or your Google account or your education account, whatever they give you. Here, it's gonna ask me if I wanna turn on sync. I'll say click turn on sync, I signed in. Now it's saying here's all the details. It's no different than what we did through the main page. If you want more details of what sync actually does, you can learn about that in settings. And yeah, here we go. There we go. Like we saw before, the same bookmarks are over. Um, the overall UI looks the same. Background of the new tab page is the same. All of the history, all of those things will be synced. Okay, so now why is this so important? The main important thing is that authentication, when I say that this is the password and the username that's shared across. Often what you're using is a Google account they've set up with this education platform, Google Classroom, Google Ed for Education, whatever it's called. That email and that password work for many apps and many things, similar to like you log into many services with your Facebook. So that's, what that, that's why that Gmail and that education account is so important. The problem is, and this is my hypothesis from my experience, is that a lot of these teachers and a lot of these schools are using many, many apps and other services that don't use that same authentication. They have like a class login and password. Um, and you usually get a packet and those things are very complicated. They don't work across all these devices. They especially don't work when you're on a phone or something else, we talked about that. So the main important thing is to make sure that you're signed into Chrome in the best environment possible, which is a Chromebook. If not on a Chromebook, following these steps on your own personal computer, downloading Chrome, signing in and syncing um, with that address, and then hopefully the bookmark and the autofill will be working similar to how it would work in the school. And um, what I've been finding is that these teachers set these things up really nicely so the kids can just hit like sign in and they autofill automatically. And so I 
my assumption is that when they set these things up, when they set the profiles with the students on the, in the first weeks, they input all these things and they autofill and just work. So when you're not signing in and syncing and you're using your profile or your Gmail account, and then you're trying to sign in with your kid's stuff, the authentication is not working. And then also when you're going to these other tools, student or your, your kid probably doesn't know that password and email. And if you don't have it on hand, it's not gonna be autofilled because you're not syncing, you're not pulling all the information down from the account. That's all I have. I hope this is useful. I'm not necessarily going to like field a ton of questions. I don't really want this to be like mom and dad tech support for distance learning. I just thought that this was a frustrating thing that me and my wife dealt with. We got in many fights over it trying to teach our three kids while also working from home. We've been hearing it from our friends and they've been having the same issues. And so I figured I would take this video to just go through like very detailed, very basic step-by-step -step of what signing in and syncing means across platform for Chrome. Um, and hopefully this helps you with whatever things you're having to do with your kid during this COVID thing. And that's all, I'm going to edit this and see my family. Stay safe, wash your hands, six feet away. Thanks again, see you next one. Pow. Oh, also, I can't verify that everything I said is entirely correct because once again, I'm a designer, not like a technical engineer. Um, I'm going to link all the specific things that I talked about in the how-to articles below um, in the comments and in the notes. So make sure to reference those um, items and articles will be much more accurate than me rambling from this room. Okay, bye.